Hi guys, it's Paul from yourlaws.co.uk. Welcome to part 3 of our Tamiya 132 uh, Voigt F4U Corsair Burr Cage build. Uh, in part 2 you saw us um, paint up the cockpit, we weathered it using chipping fluid uh, and what have you. Uh, so today we're going to carry on with the cockpit, so without further ado, let's get going. Right, okay guys, so this is where the cockpit's at now. Off camera, you saw last time I'd assembled it all, we'd sprayed it. Uh, we'd added a few more uh, chips and that to it using the chipping solution. Um, so off camera, I've done quite a bit of work. Well, not quite a bit of work, but a lot of little fiddly bits. Um, I've assembled and attached the control this, lever. Uh, I well, assume it's an oxygen tank at the back, um, as well as this one underneath the back of the seat. As you can see, it's hollow, but you can only see it from that angle anyway we go overhead um, we painted the control panels black uh, I've added using Vallejo model colour we've added the red buttons uh, silver toggles throttle levers various switches and what have you so just picked out a little bit of detail there uh, I've also added the headrest at the back I created more chipping at the top here a little bit more down the side and also if we can look right through to the front of the cockpit, on the foot controls, the surfaces behind, we've added wear and tear to those, as well as the base. I, I think it's a little bit overdone on the footrest, but a few people have said leave it be. So I'm going to add a wash to it anyway, sort of tie it in. If I don't like the look of it, I'll just add some green chipping as such to give it the detail back. Um, hose down the back has been added, that was sprayed in. Uh, Alclad aluminium that's going to get some wash in it to bring out some of its detail. Um, I also did toy and I did actually make and prime and get the base coat of the pilot. Um, I was considering putting him in, but then I thought I'm going to lose a lot of the detail created on the chipping. Uh, I've decided now to leave him out, but he's a nice detailed figure. If I just get a good look at him, several there. parts glued together well, give him a little bit of fill, good sand. Like I say, he's a nice detailed part. You also get the other one, which is basically a standing figure. So it gives you two options. You can have him in or out of the cockpit. I may paint up the standing figure and add him at the end, so next to the aircraft when I get some pictures. I'll see how time continues and what have you. But anyway, what we're going to do now, I'll zoom out a little bit there. And I'll zoom out a little bit here as well. Luckily, um, this all still comes to bits. I haven't attached anything. I've still got the seat belts attached on the seat, um, so they haven't been attached yet. All the seat glued in position, so we can remove all this, get it out of the way. That leaves us with the, the front section of the cockpit then. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. I wasn't going to dry brush it originally, and that's why I've detailed up all the dial, uh, toggles and switches and what have you, so I may lose a little bit of detail um, actually, you know, dry brushing it, but I can add it back in if I want. Uh, also, told me the idea of adding a wash, like a light grey wash in there. Um, we'll see what it comes up like dry brushed. So, dry brushing. A lot of people don't like to use, don't like to use silver. Um, I do. I'm going to add a flat black wash to this once we've got the seat belt on, so we will lose a little bit of the detail. Um, just Tamiya's XF16 flat black. So normal technique, the way I've done it virtually every time you've watched me do it. Several ways you can do it. Now use a cut down brush, like that one, or an actual dry brush. I've got Citadel as well, it's got a Vallejo one as well. And it's the same technique Paper. every time. Saturate the brush. And then what we're looking to do is wipe the brush completely dry. Go. probably too dry but we'll see and we're going to pick out where we want the dry brushing which for me I want it all along here here um, along the tops and also on the instrument panels which I've got cut out over there so usual way we're just going to lightly go over all the areas and it'll just pick out all the detail as we go 
we're not going mental with it, we're not giving it loads of pressure or you know, really showing all the detail up. So once you're happy with it, leave it be, don't be picking more up and you know, really going overboard on it. Just take your time. What it'll start to do, it'll start to bring some of the surfaces to life. Add a little bit of contrast. So there we go. Kind of may not pick it up very well, but it just gives us that little bit of contrast. All along, I quite like a bit more on that tank at the back, but it's quite flexible. So the brush isn't really. There we go, that's better than any purchase. So there we go. I mean, if we hadn't done the chip and we could have applied this to all these areas down here and everywhere, but we've got the chip in there, so I don't need to go over that with the dry brush. Oh, I'm quite happy with that as I drop it again. So that's great. I haven't lost any detail on my switches. Um, in fact, it's probably added a bit more contrast to them, so that looks spot on now, really happy with that so that's great front part, all we've got on the back really is the headrest that wouldn't get chipped but we've got the control valve on the top of that tank so we'll give that a quick go over and there's a couple of straps on it as well it's an absolute pain to paint they were And there we go. So there's the rear part done. You can really see the, the chipping effect in there now as well. Um, very happy with that. I found an easier way to remove the paint, and that was using a little bit of scourer sponge like we use for uh, car bodies to take back the paintwork. It's like an equivalent to sandpaper. Quite coarse, and that just takes the paint straight off. No must mucking about like I was with the brush. Much easier way. So there we go, so there's dry brushing done. All that's left now is we've got two instrument panels. Hopefully I've got enough paint on my brush. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. We can just detail up this part. Hopefully I'm not going to drop it. So we'll put it down on the desk. Perfect. There we go, you can see there, those raised surfaces. Starting to colour up nicely. There we go. Let's give a nice effect, just on the dials, the outer edge of the dials. And what have you. And the same for this one. So as you can see, that paint I put on originally does go a long way so there's no need to worry about putting loads of it on there because there we go may not be able to see it very well on camera but it's added silverish detail to the edge of the, the dial so I'm very happy with that, that's worked out very so, well that's that done, put that to one side that can dry nicely, put the lid back on the paint I bounce if I've gotten somewhere that needed dry brushing but I can always come back to it later Seat out of the way. So what we're going to concentrate now is instrument panels. Quite a neat way that time you do it. Uh, we'll concentrate on the big one. I'll do the little one off camera. Save a bit of time. So obviously you've got your front panel there. You've got the rear glass there. And then there's a decal inside that's back to front. So basically what you do is you cut it off, do your normal decal, this goes to the back side of that and the front side of this has the actual dials on as well. So if we cut this part out, so get some water, we'll plunk it here so we can see, I'm just going to put it on the works, so it's only one decal, so I'm not mucking about with putting in a bloody, well there's two decals to tell a lie, 
a little bit of micro set to it. There we go. So we'll point the decal in. We'll leave it in there. Make sure we get all our parts orientated the right way. So basically, it's, it connects in there like that, and the glass part shows through the front. So a nice simple way of doing it. Nothing hard at all. It's the first time I've ever done this, so fingers crossed it'll turn out okay. So we'll be going that way down once the decal is done. So just dry it off. Oh my god, it's ready to come off already, it was quick. Instructions just to orientate ourselves around. So yeah, there at the back, dials at the front. Okey doke. So fiddly. What we'll do is we will add a little bit of water in there. I'll find my decal and brush. Which is there. On the actual glasswork. So as usual, get the decal off. We'll then position it. In place. I go that's fiddly to hold. Try and keep you in shot while I do it. Just always easier said than done. Suppliers try and hold this, make it a bit easier for us. Should I look in the camera? Roughly in position on the back. You guys can see that there. Looks to be spot on to me as well. So we'll do we'll drop it off there, we'll grab our Cotton bud as usual. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so you can see what I'm doing. Let's um, we'll just mop that up for now. I'll add some more in a minute for the other decal. Get you back in shot. Let's pull the camera back a little bit. There we go, that's better. Fiddly because I can't really hold it. With the decal at the same time. Fiddly little part. There's two edges there that need conforming as well. Here we go. We'll flip that round. Just push that watch out of this edge. We'll check it again. Certainly fiddly. It's a well thought out way though, it does work. Gives a very good effect. Just rather fiddly to get those edges down. There we go. 
tiny little bit off there now. There we go, that's better. Get all that water out of there, and then we'll apply a little bit of micro salt into it using the same brush. We put the set on with. Right, okay, I've got the instrument panel drying at the minute to one side, if I can pick it up and Absolute show Absolute nightmare of the decal, all felt a bit on me. I've managed to salvage most of it, I think I've just lost one dial. Absolute nightmare. Uh, it is what it is, unfortunately. Really fiddly to do, really fiddly to hold. Same with the side one, very fiddly little part. I managed to save most of the dials, thankfully, but if you're building this kit, take your time doing that bit. Absolute nightmare. Once we're dried, um, the scent solution's dried, I'll put them on the cockpit once we're done. I don't want to add those yet until we've done the wash though really, so they'll be left off till the end. What I've done on camera, we've started to... I've got a couple of parts of the seatbelt off the of photo etch fret. Um, I've just tidied them up, they are literally just over here, they're only the small parts. Uh, what we're going to do now... Just going to make sure I get the correct part, which is yes. So we need this one because we're not having the pilot. This is the fret to have. Double check we got the right one. Yeah, seat A, so A8, which is that one. So we're going to cut that off now, and I'll show you the way I cut things off. Sorry about the light reflecting; it's quite hard to. Now my camera's gone to the bloody white bounce has gone. There we go. That's better. It's my puppet there, quite hard for me to see, so bear with me because I'm quite a distance away because I've got you guys watching. So, small shop uh, holder, cutter and just a curved swan blade. So, you put the little holder right to the edge of where you're going to cut, like so. You then get your blade, pop it on. Roll it over and see I hear an audible click as it cuts through. All the part comes free like so. Go all around, cut them all off until you got the actual the fret free. The other way of doing it, and it's quicker, and to be honest on these Tamiya photo etch screws have a lot more room is with Tamiya's photo etch scissors, you just you pop them in snip it out it's a lot easier and either way there's still going to be something to clear up at the end using the Tamiya diamond file I use so for me, if I'm honest on likes of Edouard the photo etch frets are very very close together I can make it very, very fiddly to get those scissors in. But as you can see, what we're left with on a couple of the parts, just a little, a little bit sticking out where it just needs cutting off. So if it's a large part like that, I'll grab the scissors again. Right, so close as close as possible. Then I get my diamond file. All we're doing is lightly fan it off until we're smooth, like so. So I'll go all around, get all these off. There we go, they're all off. Quick sand, or file, I should say, until I'm happy. Everything's done. So there's, I put up there one part. Just for this step. Two parts. Three parts. This is where it gets quite fiddly now. So I'm going to throw the instructions so what we need to do. Yep. So if we get a pair of tweezers to hold the seat belt. Thank you. 
like so. So just something to give me a bit of purchase on it. We then need this little, if I can get hold of it, that little part slots through the gap that are just to the right of the tweezers, you can see it. Pretty sure I've got the right way. That's the bottom. That's the top, so that goes through the bottom, which I'm going to grab a pair of very fine tweezers, like so. We pop that through the hole, like that. Okay, so there we go. What I've done is that part's been bent, if you can see it just there, I put a 90 degree bend in it with the pliers sorry, the um, photo edge pliers um, which then these are spigot sticking up if I can get the part we need, which I put on the desk somewhere there it is which is that, we'll then pop that through which goes through on camera it's a bit of a nightmare at the minute come back a little bit for you here we go so that pops in there like so just like that and then that oh as he flicks it off but it's quite good because it'll give me a second to put a little bit of super glue to it and it'll hold in position for us So if you've never worked with photo etch before you won't appreciate just how fiddly it really can be. So there we go, we've got that one in position there. Give it a little press down into the super going and just orientate it the way it should be and just double check. There I am right, and then we need to fold that little flap forwards, which I'm going to use the photo etch pliers for. Like so, and then, wow, we've still got a little bit of a lip. Pop that down. Great new tool I'm using at the minute, sent to me by uh, Matthew. Off uh, international scale model, I very kindly sent me a couple of these three for the post. Is Tammy's little CA dispenser absolutely superb? I've seen them before, thought they're a bit gimmicky, but they work absolutely brilliantly. Comes with a little top that screws in with a little pin so it never blocks up, little tiny nozzles, and you just push it to get the super glue, and that's it. You put it back on, you're ready to go. So I'm just gonna lob. A little bit under there, like so. Oh, so much pliers. And there we go. Not going to use any kick at. Because we don't need it. And there we go, there's one side of the seatbelt. Fiddling. As photo etch always is. But not a problem at all. The only other thing we need to do then. Is each one of these little. Legs at the bottom, which I'm going to grab a hold of with that. Needs to be folded up 90 degrees, like so. So there's one done. Grab the other. And two done. So there we go. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back and do all these other parts, which is going to be great fun. Probably got about six or seven parts of those as well as the side belts. Once they're on, we'll come back and we'll show attach them to the seat in preparation for the wash. Right, okay, so there we go. There's all the seat belts now made, basically built. 
in the three sections. Now we're going to start, or well, we're going to try, <laughs> attaching them to the actual seat. Look at the core, huh? the larger one attaches just there, so I'm going to pop a little bit of super glue in there like so. This, make sure we get the part orientated correctly. Make sure you guys are in shot. And that then sits in there. Now I can use the other end of the cocktail stick. Push it in position. Like so, just get straight. Take it round. I'm gonna take it off camera because I keep drawing my super glue with the activator. So I'm just gonna keep it well away from the super glue. Hopefully that will now hold that in position where we want it. Now we need to fold it over. I'm just going to fold them both over together. Push them in the position we want. Like so. And then we're just going to bend it with our fingers, trying to get it roughly where we want it. Like that, then what we'll do, we'll put a dot of super glue on the back of each part. We just hold that little part there for a minute. One word of warning, which is something I've just found out, as you can see with my fingers, the activator takes the paint off where we've applied the uh, chipping fluid. So fingers crossed I haven't damaged the seat too much. It's not going to hold, so we'll have to rethink this. That doesn't work too well at all. Right, so what I've had to do, unfortunately, off camera, was something I was hoping I didn't have to do. You may be able to see, to see, be able to discolour I've had to anneal them uh, to get them to conform to the surfaces. I was hoping I was be able to just super glue them in place, bend them over, but sadly, the super glue and the activators reacted rather badly to the paintwork uh, because we've got the chipping agent on there it literally, as you can see by my fingers, it's taken the paint off so I'm not going to risk doing that any further so I took the seatbelt back off, heated it up with a lighter until it was red hot just for a couple of seconds uh, eased it off, I've had to re-glue all the bits back on because the annealing basically melts the super glue again uh, be very careful doing this because it does create cyanide I believe it's cyanide anyway from the super glue fumes, so be very very careful doing it um, I've just got now the side belts to put on, they're in, they're not glued in position at the bottom there loose, it shows you just how well the annealing works, the only super glue I've got is on the back section as well, we also picked up a little bit of collateral damage by snapping these Straight. off, <laughs> um, but they've been super glued back in position now, so you can see how well the annealing works, um, they're in quite a natural position now, where they are, so I've just got the lap belt, side belts to do, which I'm going to do. I'm going to do them off camera because I can't film doing it, it's far too fiddly unfortunately. And I'll come back once they're on. Okay, so all the seat belts now attached in position, I'm happy with where it is. A couple of lessons learned, number one, super glue activator. If you've used any kind of chipping medium, I don't know if it works with hairspray or not, but with the AK Interactive, super glue activator takes your paint straight off. Luckily, I found it on the back. And not on the front because I'd have been rather disappointed if I'd lost all my chipping off the front. So there's a lesson learned today. Had to anneal them all, unfortunately, like I said before, I didn't really want to, but I've had to to get them to conform because I can't use the super glue properly because I can't use the activator to get it to stick in position. So these are all bent where I want them. They're looking fairly natural. There's a couple of creases in the top bit, but it can't be helped, unfortunately. Um, so these now need painting. Um, I'm going to use the Tamiya equivalent in Vallejo model colour. I'm not a fan of brush paint and Tamiya, which is 884 stone grey and 872 chocolate and then brown. The actual ends of the seatbelt, the clasps and what have you, they'll be done in silver. Um, 
So I'm going to paint these off camera to save a little bit of time because we're running out of time today on this one. I want to get the cockpit all built and sorted. Um, and I'll come back once they're painted. We'll get it all glued in position in the cockpit and then we'll apply the weather and wash to it. There we go then. So the seat's all assembled. I've glued it in position. Uh, seat belts are in. They're painted. So they've been done like a canvas colour with a red brown for the... Um, what would you call it at the bottom of the pad that sits on the lap um, and I've taken all the detail of the buckles and what have you in silver looks a bit bright and in your face for now but once we add this wash to it it's going to really dull it down and it'll tie it all together so that's glued in position now so the seat can't come off anymore uh, and obviously the front section's all ready to go by the instrument panels which we'll put on once we've applied this wash so I'm going to leave the parts separate so I can get right in with the wash and then once it's all complete we'll put it all together. Uh, get that front panel on quickly and that's it. The whole cockpit assembled and ready to go. Ready to be installed in the fuselage once we get that ready. So we're going to go to the spray booth and we're going to spray a light wash into this. Right, okay we're in the spray booth. I've got both cockpit parts attached to something that will allow me to you know, get keep hold of it while getting fingerprints all over it. Um, front, back section and the seat. Seat belt is now dried. So what we're going to apply now is it's a very highly thinned uh, Tamiya XF1 which allows us to create like a wash. Uh, tip I learnt off another model a long time ago and I've been using it ever since. Uh, there's various methods to doing this, this is the way I prefer to do so it is literally just a highly thinned mix and what I do every time I use it I just add a little bit more thinner just to make sure it does stay nice and thin over time. So I'll just chuck that lid back on, give it a quick shake. What we're going to do, we're going to blast it into all the uh, panel lines, recesses, everywhere really. We're going to use Harder Steam Back Evolution. Like I said, it's a very, very thin consistency. As you can see, it's dribbled all down the front of the cup as I always do with thin paint. Um, very, very thin paint. So ideal for this purpose. So we'll spray this part first. So all we're trying to do, we're not trying to saturate the area, we're just trying to get in all the little areas and allow it to cool. There we go, that's what we want, just like that. If you do get a little bit too much, you can blow it around with the airbrush get it exactly where you want it as such where it gives that nice dirty look to all the panels recesses, rivets and what have you but the most important thing is obviously when you've done it pop it up, you don't want it or gravity to do its work and pull everything down same on this, you want to get it right the into the back quick blasts Anywhere where there's any rivet detail, panel lines, recesses, anything like that whatsoever. Really want to get it in there. There we go. And we've got all the top of those foot rests. And there we go. That'll be allowed to dry. Just going to get a little bit more on those rivet details there. Excellent. That'll be allowed to dry. Once it's dry, we'll come back, we'll get the cockpit assembled, and we'll have a look, see what it looks like. Right, it's okay, guys, here we go. So, there's the cockpit fully assembled. As you can see over there, I'll zoom in a little bit on this camera, the wide shot. There we go, fully assembled. We've got the front binnacle hood, I suppose it is, with the gun sight and the front glass section there. We'll zoom right in and have a good look. So, there's our instruments. Like I say, the decals were an absolute nightmare. I did lose one. It's just there in the middle, you can see it, but there's nothing could do about that at all. We've got the side ones in there as well. As you can see, that dark wash 
really has helped turn everything down, turn down the aluminium. The seat belts look great now, they're nicely weathered. As to are all the buttons, switches, I did go over again and dry brush slightly because we did lose a bit of the detail with the wash itself. Like I say, we've got the binnacle hood in, that's been dry brushed. We've got the gun sight and the front part of the screen as well. So this part now all done, thank God. I've got three videos which you know the half hour each on this. Um, well, yeah, three parts, it's the third part. Uh, I've probably got about 10 hours invested in this. Just to see this single part in front of me. The man, the rest of the aircraft, but I think it looks well. A um, few calamities, but it's come out alright in the end. It looks looks rather uh, impressive for 132 cockpit. Very well detailed. So, very happy about that. So, this will look nice once it's installed in the actual aircraft itself so very happy with that absolutely brilliant glad to get it out of the way because it is one of the major parts of the build for me it is anyway and it's just nice to see a build fully detailed and looking just how I envisioned so it as well so there's part 3 done um, we'll be back very soon with part 4 uh, I'm very eager to get on with this but obviously I can't build it all in one go because you guys are going to miss it all you don't want to be getting you know, six parts in a week out, so I really need to take my time doing it, but I'm really enjoying building it. If you're thinking about getting the kit, don't think about it, just go and buy it, it's absolutely superb. Cockpit's a work of art, goes together very well, so I'm very impressed with that. So, I'll see you for part four, which will be coming up very soon, paulfmemodels.co.uk. Check out the models website, everything you need on there, including this kit, and if you're thinking about getting it, don't, just get it. Uh, check out the models Facebook page, you can send you pictures in there, and what have you. Uh, there's also links to the builds, uh, video builds I've done. Check out your model's YouTube channel. All these videos are on there, so you can comment on them, whatever you want to do on there. And also all the builds are on uh, internationalscalemodeler.com. Uh, well, not full photo log, but there's a photo log all the way through various sections. So you can get a bit of a closer look. Uh, and I'll try and get some decent shots of this and try and send it off to uh, e-models for Facebook so you can get a closer look yourselves. Uh, like I say, I'll see you for part four very soon. Uh, take care and thanks for watching.